so in fact, uh, I changed a little bit the topic to have a more general topic, and I hope I will have time to deal with activated uh, molecules at the end of my talk. If not, it will be possibly for next year, mm -hmm. with even new, more recent results. Um, we can say that uh, these topics look like the one presented by John Mario this morning, because it's interaction between molecules and, and uh, surfaces. However, he was telling us that he was uh, studying a model system, and I would say that these systems that we are studying are possibly even more model systems, because the molecules are considerably simpler, not as complex, very small. But, uh, but why do we study them on crystalline substrates? Because uh, we are studying physisorbed molecules, only physisorbed molecules, which, uh, well, this is not totally true, physisorbed molecules, and if I are at the very end of the talk, I can, I can, if I have time, I will present a study on chemisorbed molecules, but always on crystalline substrate. Why? Because the substrate uh, is able to uh, induce an order to the molecule on top of each, and we use a crystalline substrate in order to prepare 2D uh, crystallized organic monolayers. So why these 2D crystallized organic monolayers are interesting? This is the first question that I will ask, but first uh, I will tell you that this kind of works is a result of a large col collaboration with several institutes, in particular the Institute of Physics. Also, I would like to say that at least the second part of the talk co concerns the main work of two young researchers. First, Sergei Snegir, uh, who is from Ukraine and who did a postdoc, a one-year postdoc in my group, and Piotr Szeszkowski, who is from Poland, and uh, who is still in a PhD in my group in co-direction with people from uh, the Netherlands, his co-director being Nathalie Katsonis. So why 2D crystalline layers can be interesting for physics of organic molecules? There are two reasons. First, we can indeed think that 2D organic uh, layers can serve as template for a future organization of the bulk on top. In such a case, we use the organization of this first molecule to organize and induce some order to the bulk on top. So this is the first purpose, and I will uh, indeed present how, when we use liquid crystal molecules self-assembled on the, the substrate, we can indeed impose the orientation of the bulk liquid crystal on top. Uh, but clearly, the 2D uh, crystal of organic molecules can be also interesting for themselves. There are now always more uh, systems which appear because these systems are very well organized and very thin. So for new electronics, for example, or new optical properties, that becomes to be very interesting. And this will be more the subject of my second uh, part of the talk. However, you will see quite rapidly that why we are also interested in uh, uh, organized systems, it is because we can study them with advanced techniques. In our case, it is more scanning for microscopies and X-ray diffraction. And using these advanced techniques, then we can finally come, come back to the interactions which are responsible for the order of these systems. And then studying deeply organized systems, we can understand uh, in, a new fashion, in a new way how the uh, intermolecular interaction and molecule substrate interaction balance each other to indeed produce the structures that are observed. And then, if we start with the first part of the talk, uh, I will first present materials, then I will focus on the 2D uh, organized structure, and in the second part, 
I will focus on the bulk, liquid crystal bulk on top. <laughs> Materials. In fact, here in our group we are interested because there are plenty of people, in fact, in uh, research who are studying uh, self-organization of molecules on top of substrate. But we, we are interested in what happens when we are studying it in ambient conditions. It means in air, at ambient temperature, and so on. In such a case, we are clearly restricted to a small amount of substrate. One of the uh, studied substrate is gold. Gold, because as you know, is quite stable. And then we, start, we, we are using gold 111 which is interesting because it is metallic, so for a uh, uh, number of applications it is very interesting to use a metallic substrate. And it is well known that if the gold that we use is clean enough, then it will produce what we call a reconstruction, the famous gold 111 reconstruction, which allows to, uh, to determine the crystallographic direction of the substrate, even if we do not have any steps on the surface. Very famous is graphite. Graphite is used a lot because it's easy, easy to prepare. We just have to clean it. You may know that it is formed of graphene sheets on top of each other. Then we just have to cleave, and then we have a very clean graphene layer at the surface. Then by STM, we recognize here the honeycomb structure with only one atom over two, which is visible. And why is it interesting for the purpose of organizing organic molecules on top? It is because it is known already since a long time that alkyl chains on top of graphite can produce a, a commensurate structure where the Van der Waals interactions are particularly strong. So for these reasons, when you deposit an organic molecule with alkyl chain, then usually this is an alkyl chain which will uh, impose orientation and position of the molecule on top. And so the presence of alkyl chains are the driving motor for the self-assembly of organic molecules on top of graphite. However, graphite has a strong drawback to our opinion, it is that it is very difficult to have a single crystal. What does it mean? It means that if we have a piece of graphite, usually it will be, and uh, quite always, it will be composed of small crystals of graphite, of graphite, of some microns of size, disorder with respect to each other, which means that indeed we will have a well-ordered structure on one single crystal, but it will be disoriented with respect to the other one, and in total we will have like a powder, what is called a 2D powder, of the organic structure. So this is why we have decided to study another substrate, which is what we call MOS2, or molybdenic, which is similar to graphite. Why? Because it is composed of sheets which are connected by weak Van der Waals interactions, so it can be easily cleaved, and at the surface we will have a uh, network of sulfur atoms, again with a uh, hexagonal structure. And we are interested a lot with this substrate because it is usually, always in fact, found under the form of a single crystal. So what does it mean? It means first that we can use diffraction technique to study it. And then we can have really more precise uh, information concerning the uh, structure of the molecule deposited on it due to the fact that we will have single crystals of the uh, adsorbed molecules. But the second point is that because it is a single crystal, which should be able to impose some order to the, even to the bulk, because uh, molecules, first molecule will serve as templates, then we can seem to be able to transmit on a large scale the order to the bulk, which is not possible when we have a powder like the case of graphite. So we have studied, we have started to try molybdenite. And what we have done, we have studied what we, the series of the N-cyanobifenyl compounds, which are very classical. So 
this is advantage that are very well known in liquid crystal physics. And they uh, present a pneumatic phase at high temperature and at ambient temperature, a svectic A phase. For our purpose of uh, adsorption, they are interesting because they are very simple. And they can be considered as mainly composed of like a dipole, of a very large dipolar moment with an alkyl chain. And it can be a way, very rough way, to schematize this kind of molecule to try to understand, and this is the purpose of my talk now, to try to understand how the structure of this molecule will vary when we will change. In fact, what we will change, excuse me, it's in French, it's the number of carbons in the IP chains that we will increase from 5 to 11. And in fact, to tell you, from 5 to 7, we have at ambient temperature a nematic phase and no more smectic phase, whereas until 11, we have both. And after 11, only smectic phase. This is the bulk case, which has no thing to, to be compared with the structure of the 2D structure of the, the, the 2D crystallized uh, physics of molecules. Why? Because as I will show you, the physics of molecules on top of the substrate are crystallized. So they cannot be compared with the liquid crystal phase. And their main uh, structure is definitely imposed by the substrate molecule interactions. So if now we deal with the uh, structure of the NCP series on uh, MOS2. The first and quite old uh, experiments which have been performed on this kind of system were scanning probe uh, microscopy uh, studies, more precisely scanning tunneling microscopy. I hope that you know more or less these techniques where we have a tip which comes very close to the uh, surface in order to have a tunneling current between the tip and the substrate. And because the tunneling current is very sensitive to the uh, distance between tip and, and, and uh, surface, it is uh, possible to obtain to, uh, uh, the structure at, for some case in vacuum and some atomic level. But when we are studying this at air in ambient conditions, we are able to obtain molecular resolution. So I don't know if you are able with this kind of structure I forgot, unfortunately, to give you the size. Here it's 14 nanometer per 14 nanometer. And here, just as a guide for the eye, you have the molecule. So you can see that what we see is indeed that this molecule is 2D crystallized and form ribbons, well-ordered ribbons. But we see more. If uh, we, we are able to see this guide, you see that you are able to distinguish between the cyanobifidine part and the alkyl chains. Even on some place, we see the two phenyl parts. And what we can say? We can say that the structure of the molecule is an alkyl in the head-to-tail structure with the cyano here, 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 here. So we can say with STM, OK, we have ribbons with a head-to-tail structure, so we know the structure. But in fact, it's not totally true. In particular, uh, how this structure is imposed by the substrate is not so clear. In fact, we can say that here, the, the period between this and the equivalent molecule is, uh, I have to remember, it is uh, four times the period of the substrate. So clearly, we, we must have a commensurate structure. But in this direction, it's not as clear. And this is why we decided to com combine these canning tunneling microscopy uh, results together with X-ray diffraction. But because we have uh, only a monolayer is a very small amount of matter, if we want to study it by X-ray diffraction, we have no choice. We have to work with synchrotron. So this is what we did. We did experiment. At that case, it, it is quite old studies. It was in the old uh, Parisian synchrotron, which was located at Lure. Now, it is no more at Lure. It is the Soleil synchrotron that now we continue to use in, in our group. 
Uh, here you have a photo just to show you the complexity of the experiment. But here you have the sample, and here you have the X ray beam coming with the detector behind. And what we have been able, it's no, in fact, this is not true. These experiments have not been performed at Lure, they have been performed at ESRF, excuse me. And ESRF is located in Grenoble, in this particular case. But now we work a lot with Soleil. And just to show you, this is a reciprocal network of the LCB on top of MOS2. We and the red poles are all the poles where we have been able to measure an intensity. So what and what are these circles here, transparent circles? They correspond to the structure of the MOS2. Mm -hmm. So what can you see? You can you see that each wave point is located at a sub-multiple of the uh, MOS2 diffraction mm -hmm. peaks, which demonstrate directly that indeed we have a commensurate structure in the two dimensions, not only along the rivers. And what we have done is more is to go more. We have taken all of the peaks that we have been able to uh, determine. We have fitted the measure intensity with a model of the molecule in order to try to find, with this fitting procedure, the structure of the crystallographic cell. But the crystallographic cell is, is expected to be very complicated because this is, these molecules are simple, but in fact they are not so simple. If from the point of view of adsorption, they are very complex, especially because the crystallographic cell, as you see, comprises eight molecules. And the molecules themselves are not so simple. So for the fitting procedure, it was a very long work. And definitely, if you want to do a good fitting procedure with such a large amount of parameters that you have to vary, you definitely need, again, to combine with another technique, like jean Mario did this morning. He was combining a technique with another one when fitting was necessary. And this is very general, in fact, in physics. If you have a, a technique that, you, uh, that needs fitting in order to extract the data, it's always better to have another technique which allows to uh, check always if the parameters that you are varying are correct and are plausible. And this is why we always use our STM network in order to see if the direction of the fit was a good one. In fact, if you take this model, which was quite the na natural model with commensurate ribbons head to tail, as I told you, uh, this was the first one that we did. We calculated the expected intensity by x uh, expected for x ray diffraction, and the key two that we found was extremely bad, which means that this model is far to be in the real one. And indeed, if we compare it to STM, which is difficult to compare because STM is a local measurement, whereas x ray is an average measurement. Anyway, you see that one ribbon over two is quite correctly uh, described. Whereas, whereas one of the other ribbons is very badly described, in particular the position of the cyanobifenyl in these ribbons, which demonstrates immediately that these ribbons indeed is commensurate with the expected commensurability with respect to the substrate, but not this one. And it was a long, a long work in order to be able to fit and finally, we have been able to obtain a quite reasonable K2, which gave, indeed, one ribbon over two very different, and this one forming pairs. So if you compare with STM, the comparison is not excellent at all. This is particularly due to the fact that alkyl chains are not well described. Why? Because x ray diffraction is more sensible to the not light atom, but more or less heavy atom, and this is why they describe better the cyanobifenyl group than the alkyl chain. Anyway, we became convinced that in one ribbon over two, there were like pairs of molecules, which was very surprising. So, what we did is that we tried to understand the origin of such ribbons. So, we did like a rough, very rough model, a mid-field model, where we have calculated the interaction between the nearest neighbor. So interactions, obviously, 
are of bipolar type, Van der Waals type, in addition with a steric interaction, which, because these two are attractive and steric interaction, which uh, avoid the molecules to collapse. And we have to add the unknown interaction with the substrate, which are commensurate. So because by X-ray diffraction, which we have been able to determine the distance between the molecule in the two types of ribbons, we are able to calculate, also because this molecule is very simple, very classical, so the dipolar moment is known, this value is known, so we can calculate everything concerning the intermolecular interactions, and then we can use this, this fact to uh, deduce the value of the molecule substrate interaction. So just to remind you what is this molecule substrate interaction, definitely when you put a molecule in any position, in any uh, orientation on top of the substrate, you have an interaction. You have the Van der Waals dipolar interaction. But when you have a crystallized substrate well ordered, then clearly there will be a change which is here depicted by this B value between an orientation where you have no specific orientation of the molecule and the good orientation with respect to the crystallographic orientation of the substrate. And this is this B value which will give you the added interaction due to the co correct orientation of the molecule. And the first question to answer is what type of ribbon is the is a stable one, the one with pairs of molecules or the one with commensurate structure. And clearly, because the final structure is commensurate with this, which is very surprising. Why? Because the distance between molecules are very large. They are very large, in fact, because due to the fact that the crystallographic parameter of the MOS2 is large, in fact, the distance between two molecules is six angstrom. And this value is large, we know that. Why? Because in the other ribbon, when the interaction with the substrate becomes very low, they form pairs. They want to be very, very closer. So the fact that we are able to form these ribbons with a very large distance shows that when the molecular substrate interaction dominates, then you, are, you create, you are able to, to have a negligible value for molecule-molecule interactions. So, because the final structure is indeed commensurate with this commensurability, we concluded that the stable ribbon a priori is a commensurate one. So, why do we have each ribbon over two with this one being non-commensurate with pairs? In fact, we can understand because we, within this model, what do you see? But you see that if you have only ribbon which are commensurate here, you have very bad steric interaction. So in fact, it is not possible to have only uh, this kind of commensurate ribbon. So what is the solution for the system? There are two solutions. Either then the period in this direction can become larger. But if you do that, you uh, increase the distance between the ribbons still with the commensurate structure, then what will you lose? You will lose the density of molecule on the surface. And then you will decrease a lot the energy of the system because you will have less molecules per centimeter square on top of, of, of your surface. So for the system, because we are not very far to be able to have this kind of density, what did the system choose? But it chose for these molecules to turn them a little bit to tilt. If they tilt, then you will avoid this, uh, this steric interaction. But if you tilt, then you will modify the molecule substrate interaction. And because you modify the molecule substrate interaction here, then the molecule substrate, substrate interaction becomes low, and then molecule, molecule interaction are more favorable, and then they form pairs. So this is the explanation of the fact that we have one ribbon over two, which is different with pairs, because in this ribbon, if the molecule substrate, in, if the molecule is tilted, Molecule substrate interaction, the B value of the terms that I showed you before, is decreased, and then so this ribbon prefers 
to favor molecule molecule interaction. So this is a balance, always the same balance between the two kinds of interaction. And so what does it demonstrate? It demonstrates that on MOS2, with this kind of elongated molecule with dipolar momentum, the molecule substrate interactions are very anisotropic because there is very specific orientation of the molecule which are necessary. So finally, two kinds of ribbons in order to maximize the molecular density. And what is, is also interesting is because we can say that this ribbon is more stable, we are able, to, by the calculation, to obtain a limit value for the B term. And what do we obtain? We obtain that the B value must be very, very high. You see, around 100 kT. So definitely it's a rough value because our model, as you have seen, is very rough. We did not precisely calculate the molecule-molecule interaction. But it's an order of magnitude which shows that on MOS2, with this kind of molecule with a high moment, there is like a strong interaction which cannot be von der Waals type. We have done the calculation, and which is still not very clear, which induce, indeed induces this particular system. And now, what happens if we increase the alkyl chains? If we increase the alkyl chains, here is 8CB, here is 11CB. You, I don't know if you can see, but 11CB, you have the same alkyl tank structure locally. But what you have in addition, regularly, you have kinks. So what does it show? It shows that system, uh, this system has chosen the other possibility. Again, we have this very stable commensurate structure everywhere, but the distance between each ribbon has been increased in order to allow uh, no steric interaction. And because the, common, the commensurability finally in this direction is, not, is quite large, then the distance between each ribbon is very large and too large for the system which would prefer to have uh, interaction between each layer. And then what it does, it creates kinks in order to, in average, have closer uh, layers from each other. So these kinks are here to produce an incommensurate structure in this direction and to have closer layers in average. So what do we show? We show that with system, due to these more favorable ribbons, when the alkyl chain is modified with respect to HCB, because in such a case, the distance between ribbons is modified by definition, we create a transition commensurate in commensurate. And what is interesting is that when you do that, what do you do with these things? You create a chiral structure. Why a chiral structure? Because these things are only in one direction, not in the other direction. So there is one specific orientation which is chosen due to this commensurate in commensurate structure. And so we show how using a substrate which is not chiral at all, using a molecule which is not chiral at all, it is possible to uh, produce chiral 2D structure due to the fact that this is a balance between the interaction which force the structure to be tilted in one specific direction with the angle being totally defined by the interactions. And if we now continue to increase the alkyl chains, what happens? Here, you have, in particular, the case of 12 CB, but also 10 CB because there are some odd event effects on, on top of LMOS2. And I don't know if you are able, again, to understand this, you have to be used, but what do you see here? You see in white, you see very well the dipole structure. And the molecule here is, has a totally different structure, which is called a double structure, where you have molecules facing from each other, the dipole facing from each other. So it changed completely structure. Why? Simply because in this structure, the alkyl chain distance between each other is very precise, and it is a distance which favors von der Waals interaction between alkyl chains. So when alkyl chain distance is increased, but then now you have to favor the intermolecular interaction between alkyl chains and the alkyl chains, a little bit like on graphite, now dominate the structure. And the proof that it is really the alkyl chain which imposes this uh, double structure of uh, 10 and 12 CB is that when you change the substrate, you we did it, it's a work that it on the uh, 
now it's a dawn, right now, we change, we use MOS2, graphite, gold. For 10 CV, we have always the same structure. So the same structure and the same distance between alky chains. And what is interesting to see here is that here, the substrate, what is the role of the, of the substrate is mainly to orient this structure because there are some specific orientations which are more favorable, of course. And then we again have an even more chiral structure. As an example, with a more precise structure here, you see the structure like that. And now, if you take a look to the mirror image, clearly the mirror image cannot be uh, reproduced on top of this one. We have a highly chiral structure. So what we can say as a conclusion is that when you increase the alkyl chain, you always create more chiral structure. And uh, due to the balance, and clearly the interaction with the substrate is more active, more important for small alkyl chains, dealing with a strangely high molecule substrate interaction which still need to be understood. So this was concerning how we can understand interaction at the origin of 2D structure by like a deep uh, study of them. And now it's interesting because we know very well these organized uh, monolayers to understand how they impose their order to the bulk. And why is it interesting? It is because it's not so, so usual that in liquid crystal uh, physics we try to connect the macroscopic structure of the bulk to the microscopic structure of the structure of the substrate. And here, the substrate, what it is, the substrate for the liquid crystal bulk, it's just this commensurate structure that we have just uh, evidenced. And uh, we know very well the orientation of each molecule. And then we can try to understand if this orientation of each molecule has an influence or no influence on the macroscopic uh, structure of the bulk. And so, if you take this HCB MOS2 monolayer, you put on it the bulk, HCB bulk, what do you see by optical microscopy? No, so now, from the macroscopic point of view, you see that. You see that in the matic phase, exactly the same in smectic phase. What it is? It is domains, and black domains correspond to the polarizer, we are in cross polarizers, oriented parallel to the director, and white domain to the uh, polarizer oriented at 45 degrees, roughly, with the director. And then when you turn the sample, the black domain becomes white, and so on. What does it show? It shows that in nematic and smectic phase, the liquid crystal is oriented similarly. It also shows that the orientation is planar. Is planar, and forms domains where the orientation is totally different with respect to the other ones. So what we wanted to understand is what are the respective orientations of each domain of the SMECT phase on top of MOST. For that, we have performed, again, X-ray diffraction. And by X-ray diffraction, what do we observe? We are in grazing incidence in order to be able to measure the smectic layer which are perpendicular to the substrate because the anchoring is planar. And so when you do that, this is the result. What, what is this result? Is the intensity, the scattered intensity, as a function of the orientation of the, subs of the sample. And then when you turn by 80, 100 and, and 180 degrees, you have several peaks which corresponds to the, all the possible uh, domains that you will have on top of your 2D uh, organized layer of the HCB on MOS2. And so what do you find? You find that you have 60 degrees disorientation, and you are OK with that, because the HCB monolayer on top of MOS2 form domains. Form domains disoriented by 60 degrees, obviously due to the uh, hexagonal symmetry of the substrate, which impose three equivalent orientation for the HCB on top of MOS2. However, what you also find is a strange angle that took some time for us to understand of 35 degrees that you can repeatedly find, found. And what does it show? It shows that the smectic layers, in fact, because we can also 
measure the orientation of the MOS2 crystallographic direction. So we are able finally to demonstrate that symmetric layers are oriented at plus or minus 70.5 degrees with respect to the ribbons of HCB on top of MOS2. So this was very strange. This was very strange, except if you realize that the structure of the monolayer is oriented at two main angles, which are very close indeed to the 17.5 degrees of the director of the semantic layers. What does it show? It shows that, in fact, we have two kinds of dipolar orientation in the monolayer, and this is these two kinds of dipolar orientation which can impose the director orientation in nematic phase and in semantic phase. So, uh, we are not totally surprised because we know that the dipole of the substrate always impose the orientation of the director. But what is surprising is the fact that with two different dipoles, two easy axes, we don't have an average of the two dipoles, and this average was expected by the usual models that people use. With the usual rapini papula models, which tells you that the energy is proportional to the sine square to the deviation with respect to the easy axis. If you have two easy axes, you expect an average in the middle of the two easy axes. This is not what we find. We find that we are or along one easy axis or along the other easy axis. So in order to understand that, we have... So what is it all interesting? Because it is a demonstration of the bistability of anchoring. So we have done the same work for 11 CB. For 11 CB, again, a strange angle, close to 20 degrees. And what we notice by uh, scanning telling microscopy is that indeed the disorientation is no more 35 degrees now for 11 CB, it's 20 degrees. So clearly, these two uh, dipoles, again, impose an anchoring bistability. So we came back, we came now to 10 CB. Why? Because 10 CB has all these dipoles oriented along the same direction, as you can see in pink. They are all parallel. So we were expecting 60 degrees uh, disorientation for the domain. And what did we find? Do you think it's 60 degrees? <laughs> of course not. <laughs> but in fact, what did we find? We found 60 degrees and very strangely, 30 degrees. These two values, it was very strange. And what does it show? It shows that, in fact, it's not only the dipole. It is also the IP chains. When IP chains are well oriented, then they can also induce and play, induce anchoring and play the role of easy access, which was very surprising for us. And it's clearly due to the fact that it can be, when it is oriented, it is also a possibility to induce easy access. And if now, to finish, uh, we come back to 5C, we come to 5CB, 5CB also is very well oriented. Again, it's possibly not very clear for you, but again, we have like a head to tail structure for the 5CB in ribbons. This is visible by, uh, by uh, STM, and as expected, in fact, because we have always these commensurate ribbons which impose, we find again these 20 degrees like 11 CB. But contrary to 11 CB, we have extremely large domains which are with a single orientation visible by optical microscopy, which is related to the fact that we have no p stability for 5 CD, contrary to what was expected. So to explain that, ah, just a point. Here you have 5 CD on graphite, just with the same, so the same size of the pictures and previously, just to show all the small domains and why graphite is not so huge if we want to uh, transmit the order to the bulk. And just to, to finish, we have shown that to explain these results of instability, we have to modify in a mid-film manner the uh, easy axis, uh, the rapini papula expression with a sinus 4. And if we have a sinus 4, we can find the two minimum that uh, experimentally we obtain. And we demonstrate that with 5CB, we have a first order transition from two minimum in the direction of only one. And then, uh, clearly, this is due to the order, uh, clearly, what we think is that when the surface is very well ordered, then we will have the sinus 4, which is very important. 
when, when it is not so well ordered with small alkyl chains like for 5 CB, it is not well ordered. And just to tell you what we observe is dipole of alkyl chains orientation only, even in smectic phase, impose anchoring. But you can have observed no transmission of chirality. The chirality remains in 2D, but it's not transmitted to the liquid crystal, whereas liquid crystal can be chiral. So in fact, what now we are doing with, in collaboration with people from USA, uh, experiment with other liquid crystal compounds which are able to transmit chirality way better than the NCB series, and apparently we are able to create structure where the anchoring has been able to transmit chirality at the macroscopic level. But it, not totally sure, huh? it's uh, quite uh, on, on the way uh, studies. And obviously, I do not have time at all to finish my talk. It will be for next year. So thank you for your enthusiastic talk. And so now we have time for a few questions. Uh, I just uh, want to ask, uh, that angles which you mentioned, uh, are they in plane or you have some pre tilt out in plane? It is only azimutal experiments. So everything what we observe is in plane. Why? Because the molecules in 2D are mainly flat. Oh, right. So possibly there is some pre tilt, mm -hmm. but it's not, it does not have any role because uh, it's not imposed, I would say, directly by the crystallographic structure. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And I'm interested in, did you try to apply some electric or magnetic field to the your surface? Maybe it can change some uh, anisotropy on the surface. Of course, it would be very interesting. Why? Because as you see, I tell you, it's chiral uh, and so on. But definitely it is not, because in average it's not chiral, because we have domains. So, because we have domains, in average, it's just turned out because we have all the possible domains. So what we would like to do, as many people try to do, is to uh, favor one of the direction with respect to the other one in order to induce being able on such crystal to impose. Uh, very long time ago, I tried to prepare my sample uh, uh, in a RPE magnetic uh, field. So I forgot the value, but it's quite high value of magnetic field. And it was not very clear <laughs> that, I, that I succeeded. But I realized something now. I realized that probably this domain that I showed you, for example, for ATP, is quite too far. Not so small, because they are of between 10 and 100 microns large. But small due to this instability. Why? Because 5CB presents domains of well-defined, in orientation totally well-defined, of uh, close to one millimeter. So we should have to understand how these, these uh, processes of two easy access occurs cinetically, because it's a question of kinetics, in order to be able to do that. But it, we never studied that. It would be very interesting. So maybe we could close the, the lecture. Thanks again, Emmanuel.